Yeah, I, I, um, that, that was probably the most dangerous uh, speak for the Democratic coalition. That is a young woman of color. She's describing the experience a lot of people have, feeling that maybe if you're around too many liberals, you might get criticized too much or you might not be able to speak your mind. And she spoke to it really well. And she's way more famous than any of us up here. Yeah. I'm going to tell you that, way more famous. And so uh, to the extent that these guys are trying to, to bust up our coalition, that was a, a, a bunker buster right there. By the way, we were safer, wealthier, and stronger. A vote for Donald Trump is a vote to put money back in our pockets and good food on our kids' plates. Yes. <laughs> or, as Trump would say, it's a vote to make America great again. Thank you so much. Hey there, my name is Devori Darkins. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be uncovering, I would say, this, th this bad habit that we have in the black community as it relates to Joy Reid's rant and just racist comments, I believe, towards Amber Rose. Now, this is a follow up from another video that we did where uh, Amber Rose, she goes out, she makes a great speech at the RNC, probably one of the best. She's definitely one of the top five speeches there and understands something they probably have had maybe I think 10 to 15 speakers per day. And this is going on the fourth day. Um, and so she had a great speech. And, uh, you know, we had people who reacted to it initially. There was a lot of backlash. There was the whole Matt Walsh drama that that went down, criticizing the RNC for even allowing someone with her background to be on the stage. We already discussed that. But I want to dive deeper on an important thing that as a black community, we need to address. Uh, and that is how we actually speak about ourselves, our image, and how we are pretty much sometimes hypocrites when we sound like Joy Reid. Now, before I play that video, you guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe. Let's check out what she said. So as we can see here, Amber Rose clasped back at Joy Reid after criticizing convention speech, stop being a race baiter. Now, she did eventually delete this uh, comment on X. So she basically went on X and responded to Joy Reid. And then after it got millions of views, she ended up deleting it. But I actually wanna to read to you guys exactly what was said. Um, that Joy Reid, Joy Reid had said, and this speaks to our problem in the black community as it relates, re relates to how we speak about our own kind, how we speak about our culture or our image. Now, uh, if I scroll down here, it says, Reid wasted little time tearing into the model on MSNBC, cautioning black voters from embarrassing the message that Rose, a person of color with mainstream fame, has delivered on stage, like you guys saw what Van Jones had stated. Uh, she's racially ambiguous. I don't want to say she's black because she said she's not. So I don't want to say this black woman, this woman who is of whatever race that she has claimed, she said she's not black, but the RNC brought somebody whose whole career is based in black culture. So let's, let's first uncover the 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 one mistake we usually make in the black community right we the, the our community has spent so much time right in complaining bitching moaning uh riding right uh you know protesting right pushing for change as it relates to how people see us our worth how we should have the same opportunities. And the mistake that she's making is what Joy Reid is asking for white people to do for black people, she won't even do for others. That right there is our problem in the black community, that we ask for people to look at us equal, but we don't even look at our own people equal, right? And that is an issue. That speaks to why when you're in the black community, everyone knows this. If, if you're black, you know exactly what I'm talking about. We have a hard time taking responsibility and looking in the mirror as black people. We really do. Now, I don't speak for black people. I'm not Al Sharpton. I don't go on the news saying I'm, I'm speaking for all black people, but I am a black person and I was brought up in the culture and my family is black and I'm not biracial any means so you know i think i have something to say on this now anyways 
That is a problem. Let's keep reading, though. Her whole culture came from black culture, even though she says she's not a black person herself. Why does she keep saying she's not a black? Why, why does she keep repeating that? Right. And the fact that she is now the person they're using to try to recruit young people of color and to say that this is the person who is the endorser of Donald Trump, who you should trust when she won't even claim the culture that brought her to the table. I'm dubious that this will work. Now, uh, before I even respond to that, Amber Rose responded. She said, hi, Joy Reid. I've never said I wasn't black. I said I identify as biracial. I'm not going to invalidate. I think that's what she meant to say. My white father to make you feel more comfortable. Stop being a race baiter. Your president does enough race baiting for all of us. And I would say that is facts. That's absolutely facts. I mean, everything that the Democrats do is coming from a place of race. But let's go back to what's the issue in the black community. Amber Rose has never come out and said, I am black. But she's obviously half black. OK, but she hasn't come out and said that she was black. So it's not like Joy Reid is talking to someone who's an Indian or a Jew. Right. Or is, uh, you know, I don't know, not Nigerian, you know, <laughs> I mean, she's talking to someone who was born in America. Her father uh, is white and her mother is black. So, I mean, <laughs> what, what what are you getting at? Right. What, what are you getting at with your statement? If we go back here, her whole culture came from black culture, even though she said she's not a black person herself. OK. And the fact that she is now the person they're using to try to recruit young people of color and to say that this is the person who's endorsed of Donald Trump, who you should trust when she won't even claim the culture that brought her to the table. And here's the problem, right? So, again, Joy Reid wants black people to be looked at a certain way, but she won't deliver the same respect to other people, especially other people who also is black or has uh, black in her family. It just shows you the the how hypocritical we can be as black people. And I don't think Joy Reid represents black people. I think she's, in some respects, definitely politically an embarrassment. Uh, I think, obviously, she has some level of success. She has her own show. She's she's known. So on that front, good, I'm good. That's great. But when you go out there and you that is your response, you know, about it and you make it about race. This is why, as black people, we don't come together. Black people are more divided than ever. We are not really a, co a cohesive community. We are a bunch of individuals and we are a bunch of individuals because of rhetoric like that. And I grew up in this, you know, you, you're either dark skinned black from the South. That's what really black is. Or you're light skinned, you're whitewashed, you're red bone, yellow bone. Right. Black people came up with these labels within their own community and it has actually caused uh, it, it actually has become more toxic, in my opinion, and it's not really productive or conducive to promoting a black culture that will succeed in the future as a community. So, you know, th this is what I just wanted to react to today um, and speak on this issue, because a lot of I'm sure there's a lot of black people that would actually agree with me. Um, that 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 response was absolutely unnecessary. Who is Joy Reid to even speak on black culture? It's not like she is the uh, ambassador of black culture. So, you know, as far as someone being able to go out there and speak on behalf of black culture, I'm not. I don't think she should. But I do want to just touch on what the issue is and bring this to the forefront and get other black people to see we are our own worst enemy. Right. You ask for someone to respect you and to look at our image in the right light. But then you go on national TV and that is your response. Because you're deranged, you're insecure, you're so caught up in this victimization rhetoric that that is your take. Not, you know what? She delivered a professional speech. I don't agree with her. I don't like her past. I don't like what she stands for. But she did show up today and she did speak to people in the country that relates to her and that is similar to her. Now, that's not what she can say. You see, Van Jones says that, right? Even though Van Jones is also a race hustler, too. But even he was able to see the logic behind it. She can't see any logic. She's absolutely unhinged. 
And again, we have people in the black community just like her doing more damage, doing more damage to our image than these so-called white people that are racist. That's my mindset on this. What about yours? What do you think about her attack on Amber Rose and her response? Uh, if you do want to speak on this whole black issue, what do you think about it? You think this is a problem in the black community? Have you seen biases and contradictions and hypocrisies in the black community yourself? I want to hear all of this and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>